Hey guys, welcome to everything you wanted to know about the number E. This is also known as Euler's number or Euler's constant, and we'll see why in just a second. Little quote there by exponential growth. What we'll see or learn today. So we'll see what is this number E, what are the properties of this number E, and then some formulas and equations that use E. So what is this number E? Let's start off with a little history and how E came about. A problem related to compound interest first proposed by mathematician John Bernoulli. The problem John was trying to solve is what would happen if you compounded interest not only yearly, monthly, weekly, daily, or even hourly, but continuously. Could we say like, hey, this all goes kind of towards something. So this is the interest formula here where P is the initial amount that you invested, like I initially invest a hundred thousand whatever. And if we want to say the amount after so much time that we're invested, how much is that? Well it's P times one plus R over N, where R is the interest rate. N is the amount of times that we are compounded and usually we'll say throughout the year. So N is the amount of times compounding. And so what Bernoulli wanted to figure out is he wanted to figure out, okay, what if we let n get really, really, really large? If we compound only once a year, then n is 1. If we compound every month, then n is 12. If we compound every day, then n would be 365. If we compound every hour, minute, second, nanosecond, what if we let n get so large that we take n to infinity? Is there a way that we could say you know, how do we compound this continuously? But every moment, every every actually instant of time, our money is getting compounded because that's the that will return the largest rate of growth for our money. So so what does this go to? What happens if we do that? So that was the problem that we tried to solve. And then Leonard Euler, which is why this is also called Euler's number, discovered that hey, if we let n go to infinity. We go to this number E here, this constant, okay? And then this is actually the formula now for if your money is compounded continuously, we use the E. So Euler figured this out. He called the constant E, and just like that, the number E was born. So let's see some kind of facts about E, or also known as big facts about E. So the number E, it's an irrational number similar to its more popular, more famous counterpart pi, which is also an irrational number. It's approximately equal to 2.71828 dot 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 goes on forever and never repeats. The way that we are going to use it and that it's mostly used, it's used in the natural exponential function, this thing e to the x, which is what we're going to use from here on out. The inverse of this e to the x function is the natural logarithm, also known as ln of x. We'll see this more in a future video. Um, one of the equations, and another equation that uses e, is one that models population growth. So just like the equation used to model our money, the equation used to model population growth is quite similar. Initial population times e, k is growth rate times time, which is usually in years. That'll give you out, okay, what do you expect your population to be? We can model populations. We can also model things like spreads of viruses. So what are some other properties of e to the x? Well, like we've said already, the inverse of e to the x is ln of x. So it does have an inverse, which implies it is a one-to-one -one function. At any point of the graph, the slope of e to the x is, in fact, e to the x. This is the coolest thing ever. Anywhere on the line, if I try to take the slope at any point on this line, the slope is equal to e to the x. So the slope of the graph is basically the function itself, which is really cool and really useful in things like calculus. And like any exponential, e to the 0 is equal to 1. So it does follow these same rules. If we look at the graphs of e to the x, so this red line here is e to the x. As we can see, nice, beautiful exponential growth. The blue line is e to the negative x. Again, some nice, beautiful exponential decay. If we look at a couple values of e, and to evaluate e more likely than not, you're going to have to use your calculator. Find that e button on your calculator. It should look like an e to the x. So if we wanted to evaluate at negative 2, 
let's see, e to the negative 2 power gives us 0.135. e to the negative 1 power gives us 0.368. e to the 0 power gives us 1, like we've already stated. And e to the first power gives us 2.718. Okay, just regularly, here are our points. Here's so a couple of evaluations of e. So how do you evaluate e to the x? Literally, whatever it is that you want to plug it in, plug it in for x, put it in your calculator, and evaluate it. That's the easiest way for this. All right, let's look at some other stuff. So last, we're going to re-examine those formulas and equations that use e, and then we'll be done. So the compound interest, with compounding interest continuously, where A is your kind of final amount, P is equal to your initial, initial investment, R is equal to your interest rate, interest rate, and T is equal to time. Usually this is in years. So for instance, if I wanted to know how much money I would get if I initially invested $100 at 8%, which would be 0 0.8, over the course of, I don't know, let's say um, 10 years. Let's see how our money grows here. While we take our handy dandy calculator, open it up, throw this in. What is 100 times E? to the 0 0.08 times 10. Oh, after 10 years, my $100 investment would grow to about $222, approximately. So we just put 100 bucks in the bank, 8% interest, we let it grow over 10 years, we'd have 222 bucks and all said and done. Not bad. All right, another one, population growth. As you can see here, it's real similar to the compound interest continuously. So let's suppose that we had, um, let's see, our population on day one was 1, e to the growth rate of, I don't know, 0 0.7. And what would happen after... 10 years, 10 days, whatever. And let's suppose this is bacteria splitting. We can also suppose it's the COVID-19 virus spreading. So what would the population be after this? Let's see, so that'd be e to the 0.17 times 10. And if we started at 1 after 10 days, years, whatever it is, we would come to 5.4, we'll call it. Seven. Okay, so just a couple formulas that use E and basically how do we use it? You plug it in, you get your values, and go from there. So, what do we now know? We know the number E, we know its history, we know it's named after Leonard Euler, we know the properties of E, we saw its inverse, it's ln of x, we saw the graph, we saw a couple um, points on the graph as well. Um, we also figured out the slope of e to the x at any point on on the line is equal to e to the x, which is really cool. And some formulas and equations that use e. Also, the big deal here is that from here on, we will always see this as kind of e to the x as a function, as a natural exponential function, which in this case, x is what's going to be changing, and this is what we're going to look at from here on out. All right. So, as per usual, if you have any questions, all you have to do is ask, and I will see you guys in the next video.